Well, hi guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, episode six of our restoring a 1931 Model A Woody Wagon. I'm here with my father-in-law, Tim, again. Say hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. You love that. <laughs> Signature. So you've been quite busy over the last couple months. We haven't done an update in a little while. I think right. the last update was when we picked up the motor, right? I think so, yeah. And that really worked out well down at Dave Gerald's place, but you've been busy through the winter months, kind right. of going through methodically just checking each part and brakes and, and all the different parts. I was hoping today you could just take us through kind of all the right. stuff that you've done. Great. Because we're just about to the point where we're gonna be able to assemble a running or rolling chassis, right? Perfect, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, why don't we take us through, I'll jump around the other side of the camera and okay. then you can just show us I'm looking over at these rims over here and they look so nice. I can't wait to see them on the car. <laughs> but uh, take us through and show us what you've done. Okay, well, we've been busy uh, several months really uh, to do this. We took uh, started with taking the whole thing apart. Nolan and Ben, our 12 and 13 year old, worked with us on that and that was uh, such a good time. And then they worked with us on various parts, cleaning up and, and doing that kind of thing, putting them together. So, yeah. yeah, good. Well, I'll jump behind the camera and we'll take a look at what you've done. All right, so what are we, where are we at here? Well, I want to start going through the different parts that we have laid out here on our on our concrete slab. Uh, first of all, we, we took the frame, the chassis, totally apart, and uh, we've gone through it. We had a sandblast at a shop in Lionel Lakes, Minnesota. They did a great job with it, and then we recoated it with a special frame paint that's made just for this kind of thing. And uh, now it's ready to go together. It's uh, it's great. Take us through some of the parts that will bolt onto the oh, frame yeah. here. Well, let's start with the front end and rear end. Uh, that's kind of our first first point to be able to get it up off the ground. So we've gone through the rear end and uh, went th I went through the brakes, checked the bearings, and uh, they're in great shape. I reviewed all of the brake parts and uh, they are actually in great condition. I think somebody before the car was put aside for restoration, I think they already did the brakes because everything looked brand new in there. Even the, uh, the, the hubs look like they were recently tuned up and, and looks great. So. Yeah, so everything's ready to just bolt up. And uh, we got a rear spring, which is a 10, a 10 leaf uh, spring. So we got new uh, shackles that'll be going in, uh, into the um, locations and also in, in the location here. And so we'll, we got a spreader, a frame spreader that we'll use to, to, to spread those and put them in place. And we got a new, new set of shackles that we can use on both sides. And we're using the, uh, the modern uh, grease fittings instead of the traditional ones. I just like those an awful lot better and that seems to be what a lot of people are doing just to make it work better for them. And then of course we cleaned up all of the U-bolts for clamping it together. So this is ready to go. We'll have to make a few adjustments like the brakes of course once we get the wheels on and get things rolling. But that'll, that'll go on first. We've got a, a gear for the speedometer that I need to just uh, lubricate up. This bolts on, goes right on the bottom of the uh, drive shaft right here and uh, just bolts in place like this. And then I went through the front end and we did a lot more work on this. Of course, I went through the brakes and, and bearings, clean everything up again. The brakes were in such good shape, so I didn't have to do much with those. I replaced the kingpins, which was a big project, and we did that. Our club, 20, Twin Cities Model A Ford Club, has all these tools that we can we can loan, and so I did that. I replaced the kingpins, took out the old ones, put in new bushings, and then we put uh, new grease fittings all over. Uh, the shafts here for the front brakes were in great great shape already. We put in new bushings for the for the springs here the, the on the perch, and then we've got the new spring all ready to go, and that'll that'll also line up. We've got new new shackles again for this where they which slide in, and we, we uh, went through all of the tie rod ends and uh, other fittings and got those all rebuilt. And I have to adjust those yet and make sure that we have a good alignment on the car. But you simply do that by having these bolts on each side loose and then turning the shaft and you can get it inside or outside. And you have to be within 1 16th of an inch from the front of the wheel to the back of the wheel of towing in in order to make it work right. So we cleaned everything up, painted it, and uh, got it all ready to go. So this one is, uh, is ready to just bolt up. I need to just uh, also adjust the wheels, uh, the nuts on the, on the wheels. These are, you tighten these up to the tightest point um, reasonably and then you back it off one in order to be able to get the, the cotter pin in the right hole. So so where do, show me on the frame where these front and rear ends mount to the car here. Okay, um, the, the spring will be assembled. There's a bolt that ties everything together. You can see it's, it's right here. We have to actually tighten it up. We have to grease between all the different uh, spring leaves. So these guys will go on the frame and can't really get at it right exactly right now because we're too close to the ground but this will mount right in this, this 
piece right here. It'll mount right up in that spot. That nut right there actually, or the bolt fits right through this head right here. And uh, so that'll, that's how that works. So that'll be the front. And then the rear end, like we talked about just a minute ago, will fit right in this groove right here. And again, that's the bolt hole, the bolt head that goes uh, in this uh, opening right here. And then the clamps go down through here and are held with some clamps below. Our clamp for our woody is a little bit different because it's got a bolt hole at the end of this clamp which holds the exhaust pipe which needs to be extended out a little further because the car is a little bit longer than the average uh, Model A and you might get some exhaust fumes back in. So, so once we get the rear end and front end on then we need to work on the brakes. And so these are the brake rods or six brake rods here and they need to be adjusted exactly to the exact uh, length and uh, my book uh, tells me all those lengths and so then there's a lock nut and these are all new that we got so we had to uh, uh, replace those and get them all cleaned up just uh, ran a thread chaser on the threads just to make sure they're all nice and cleaned up sandblasted painted all ready to go then we have the emergency brake cross member as well which uh, works out great for um, connecting the emergency brake up and and uh, getting that going and this is the other crossbar for your service brakes Again, we cleaned it all up. We got all the bearings. These, these were really tight bearings, so we didn't have to replace these uh, bushings, actually. So that can just be mounted up, and these mount up underneath the frame. So these pieces will hold the cross shaft in place, and it bolts right up to the frame right here. There's a top piece and a bottom piece, and a bolt that holds them together. They hold the, uh, the bushing that you saw before, and then it rotates, and that's the mechanical part of the brakes. And then there's a pedal. There's a rod that goes from this uh, shaft up to the pedal. Uh, right on the transmission. So we also have a battery uh, uh, box that's going to be mounted right here in this location like this and that'll hold the battery in place and then there'll be a cover of course that goes on the battery and uh, that'll hold the battery down nice and firmly. Looks like you clean so, those parts up real nice. Well this is a new, this is a powder coated from the uh, you know from the magazine. Snyder's is where I got most of my parts. But then this is one that was uh, that was already provided by uh, by Tim from McAllen, Tim Johnstone. And, and of course, for those of you joining us, Tim Johnstone is the guy, the gentleman who we bought the car from down in McAllen. Uh, this is a project that he had started, kind of years in the making here, and unfortunately did not live to see it through. So we're going to see it through, and I believe the the family is continuing to watch along as we restore the car. So this is Mel. This is our new friend from McAllen. What do you think, Mel? Are you happy to get all this stuff out of your garage? Well, I'm happy and sad. Yeah. Yeah, bittersweet. Bittersweet. Yeah. Mel and Christy are going to stick with us and watch us restore this car to make it, uh, make it something that the kids and grandkids can enjoy for years to come. And come up to Wisconsin for some ice cream. Come up for some dairy. Yes. Absolutely. Christy, who is the daughter and who I spent most of my time talking with, she said when we get the car done, she wants to come to uh, uh, Siren, Wisconsin, because they do come this way from time to time, and she wants to go with me and my family to get ice cream at the local ice cream store, the uh, Burnett, Burnett Dairy, and so I said, I promise that we can do that. So count, count on it. We're, we're going to be seeing you then, Christy. Well, let's continue on. We've got uh, the engine that we had, Dave Gerald from uh, Jordan, Minnesota to redo for us and it's amazing. He just did a, a tremendous job. We had a video that showed how it was run up and how that all worked and so it's, it's neat. So it's all rebuilt. It's a brand new engine really. He also put on a lightened flywheel and then he put a different uh, clutch and throwout assembly from a later Ford which is a little bit easier to press and it works a lot better. So, so we got a new clutch, new flywheel, a new, uh, the whole new mechanism. And then uh, I've got some bolts here that are temporarily in located so that you can line up the transmission more easily and just slide it on and then you can bolt up and then you take these, spin these back out again after that's all set. Looks like you've done some work here on the bell housing and stuff on well, the you know, too, huh? We did, we cleaned it all up and uh, it's in great shape. Uh, Nolan and I took this apart and we put in a new uh, chromed shifting lever and uh, that really uh, is going to be kind of nice and it shifts through the gears very nice. I spin the I, I spin the shafts and everything seems very quiet and we can try it out and just make sure that's going to work well. So that's, have, why you'll, that's why you get a rolling chassis, you get the thing running and test everything and if we decide later we need to get the tra transmission rebuilt we, we can do it at that point. Exactly and, and second gear always makes a little bit of noise it seems like in my Model A's that I've had so we'll see if it's, if it's within reason. 
I'm also doing a couple of things. I'm replacing the shaft right here where the brake and the uh, clutch uh, lever fit on because it was quite worn and uh, they're very inexpensive. So I've got one of those I'm going to put in and put in a new pin that holds it in place. This is the lever that, that actually actuates the, the clutch and the throw out bearing. And then we got the uh, part to connect the uh, rear end and the transmission together here and that bolts in place. You like you clean that up? Like that, it's cleaned up, painted, ready to go. We've got all new bolts for that, so that's all all set. So, And then uh, the other thing we'll do, need to do is, is mount the uh, motor mounts here, one on each side, and they mount right to the engine like this. And there's also uh, some uh, rubber that goes between here, and uh, so that gives you good vibration control. So we've got one of those for each side. Those are all cleaned up and ready to go. Tim had also redone the manifold, the exhaust, and the supply, the intake manifold, and so that's all ready to go. And then we have a, this is a carburetor I got from Tim, and I don't know what kind of condition it's in, but uh, it may have been on one of the engines, original engines that he had. But and this is another one that I had from my truck. We need to get this rebuilt. There's a guy over in uh, Bloomer, Wisconsin, Roger Sturtz, and he does a great job with rebuilding these. So I'm going to have him actually rebuild um, one of these, or maybe both of them, for that matter, just to have an extra one on hand. So. But a Zenith carburetor, I think, is a better way to go rather than maybe one of the others. There's other varieties available too, but I like the Zenith really well. So that's our project. And then once we get the chassis all together, we've had a chance to uh, try it out, we'll be able to put on the cowl. Oh, I want to talk about one other thing too, and that's the steering. We've got uh, two steering uh, columns here, steering boxes. And I don't know the condition of these. I bought these uh, from a man in Wheeler. Um, that was going to use it for a project and he again passed away before he was done and so his son sold it to me and uh, so we got this one and then this is one that came from uh, from Tim Johnstone and I there was some work done on it and I don't know what kind of work was done but it looks like it's been cleaned up and some parts look like they might be new uh, he's got some nice really nice uh, control arms here which I think could work well um, but I'm gonna bring both of these to Roger Sturtz as well and have him uh, take and look at the best one and pick one out and and uh, then re rebuild it so we have a nice new one. Both of these steering wheels are a little bit rough. This one's got tape all over it so I don't think I'm going to use that one. That's not really a, very much of a show show quality steering wheel. This one isn't bad. It's got a couple of cracks in it. It's very very rebuildable so that could work but I got one right here that I got again from Tim. Tim I think went to a lot of swap meets or something but he picked up one that it, it looks like it came out of the box out of the factory new there's not one one flaw on it it looks absolutely perfect so we'll clean it up uh, put a light coat of paint on it and uh, like satin finish and it'll, it'll work out really well I think so so that's all set yeah then the next thing we need to do as I mentioned is the cowl get the cowl mounted uh, and that actually fits on top of the of the splash aprons eventually but we'll get this work done first we got a couple of uh, issues with the with it. It's it's in really pretty good shape. This is a March 31 So it's got the teardrop shape recess in the uh, firewall And then of course the valve is right here on a 31 and then all, all the other parts mount up here with the coil and The terminal block and some of those kind of things, but it's in great great shape And then uh, what else we got here? Well, we got some uh, pat patch panels We need to put on below which is very very common in, in older model A so I was able to get a couple of those again from Snyder's and uh, that, that'll work out great. We'll put one on each side and we have to do a little bit of repair work on the inside where we had some rust, but it's in really good shape other than that. So now we can do some body work here, but we'll probably have a body body shop uh, do the do the work too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. we'll uh, we'll have a body shop get the finished painting on it and we'll I'll do some, but then we'll do the finished blocking and painting. Yeah. At a body shop. And the color is kind of a, a tan, right? It's a this tan. factory color. Right, it's a factory color. We're going to go with the factory if we can because that's yeah. going to be the best. So then once we get the running boards on and once we get the cowl in place, then we can actually start working on the floor. So that'd be the next step. So this is the front section of the wood floor and uh, this fits underneath the cowl in those two pieces that are just directly uh, under the cowl. And then uh, this is a floorboard that fits in place, which is a, kind of a, looks like a standard Model A floorboard that's where the battery access is and this is where the transmission sits and then of course we have the sloping piece that fits like this on the floor which is your starter are you which is your uh, gas pedal and a support uh, uh, post clutch pedal brake pedal and that kind of thing so this is all pretty standard uh, material from from model a stores so 
that'll work great. Then once we get that piece in place, and as we do that, we'll put together the main part of the floor system, which fits right directly um, in, into that uh, system right here where, where this all joins together. So we got, uh, we got uh, different spots that are recessed in for the seats. And uh, uh, then for the rear seats right here. So the main, the main seat, the, the driver's seat is right here. It fits in with a, a little box that fits around this whole thing and a, a piece that comes across. And these are the jump seats in the, in the back. There's a seat here and a seat here. And uh, these are all removable in the back. And this is a big bench seat in the back with, with these uh, re recesses where, where we can put everything. We got all those pieces. Tim had collected all those, so that should be all set to go. Then we'll, we'll seal this up with a black uh, uh, paint. I've gotten directions from some of the pros that know what to do. And so we'll get that all sealed up and done uh, to, to perfection. So then once we get that, then we can work on the whole body, get the whole body put together and uh, Get, a fin get into a finished car. I've also made contacts in the Twin Cities with a, a company that'll do the uh, reupholstery of the, of the seats. We've got all the seat bases, the springs, uh, we've got the original um, upholstery so to use for a pattern. And you can also buy these in, a, in one of the magazines or several of the magazines that are available for Model A's. So we could also go that route, but Tim had also bought a big roll of a vinyl that especially for this this car so we'll probably just go with that so we're making great progress i'm very happy about how it's how working about these wheels these look oh yeah i forgot huh? about the wheels yeah yeah so uh we bought some new tires bought them at the uh back to the 50s car show and uh so we're pleased with that got the wheels powder coated and they're ready to go so it'll look real sharp there's of course a hubcap and tim again had new hubcaps uh, five hubcaps uh, for these. We'll have one of these as a spare tire. Speaking of a spare tire, this part, which is a spare tire holder, it goes up through the splash apron and up into the fender. It just bolts right under these holes right here. And, uh, and that shaft, we have the shaft that Tim had. And so we'll be able to mount that up. I need to just uh, sandblast that and clean it up and we'll, we'll be ready to go there. So we got some work to do, but again, the boys and I will work on this together and we'll be in pretty good shape here. So hopefully through the next couple, three months, we'll be able to get this all together and running. So very excited about it. Very, very fun project. Well, thanks, Tim. That was really fun. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work and it's really exciting to see everything coming together. I can't wait to see the, the front and rear ends mounted to the, the frame and, and this thing actually, I think you, your intent is to actually put a little bench on this thing, maybe roll it around a little bit, right? Well, you have to try it before you actually want to put it all together. Make sure that everything's working right, the clutch and the transmission and rear end and brakes and all those kind of things. It's easy to, to take something apart and, and re, redo it if you need to. Like for example, the transmission. I didn't go through the transmission completely, but it sure seems, seems good. I took the tower off and uh, rebuilt that, put a new, new uh, chromed, uh, you know, uh, shifting stick. Is that the right word for it? Shifting rod, whatever we, it is. We know what you meant. You know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we did that kind of thing and that was fun. I did that with Nolan. And uh, you know, so some of those kind of things, we can just check it out and see how it works once we once we get it rolling. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, great. Well, thanks to you for uh, who are watching and following along. I know it's been a little while since we've done an update. If, you, if you're just joining us, uh, on the bottom of our channel page, right down the bottom, we have some different playlists and I've got this whole entire restoration vlog linked down there in a group, in a, in a playlist. So you can go back and watch episode one when we picked up the car down in McAllen, Texas and to where we are now. And the hope is we just, we just last or a couple weekends ago, it was back to the fifties car show. Right. Yes. And we're hoping to do a video next June, July at back to the fifties <laughs> with this car done. That's our hope. That's our hope. You'll right? see how it goes, you know, yeah. take one day at a time, but I, so, I think we can do it. Yeah. If you haven't already, please like the video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe and follow us along as we finish up this car. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Great.